Now in cases whereby you have early severe attachment problems, such as neglect and abuse, uh, again this will alter the trajectory of the right over time and it will affect some of the major functions of the right hemisphere in detrimental ways. Number one, problems in being able to emotionally communicate affects to other human beings which incidentally in cases of suicide the person is usually isolated and does not have the, the, either the social environment that is interested enough in his own internal world, internal states, especially the, the, the heavily painful states, etc., um, to intersubjectively make a connection and therefore to interactively regulate that. So by definition we're going to see at later points of stress problems in affect regulation. In the cases of suicidal patients, an exquisite sensitivity to misattunements, to narcissistic injuries, etc., from which there is then an intense affective response, and the intensity of the affective response is there literally because this inability to either auto-regulate it through one's own coping behaviors or interactively regulate it with another human being. Whoops, I almost touched that. Um, Next piece, in addition to the affect regulation, and of course the kinds of affects that we would find dysregulated in suicidal patients, in addition to be depression. But now we're talking about hopelessness and hopeless despair. We're not talking about neurotic depression here. Much more severe than that. But also other affects would be dysregulated. And these are the same affects which would have been regulated early in the attachment relationship. So we're looking at dysregulations, high dysregulations of shame, nonverbal affect, high dysregulations of disgust, high dysregulations of uh, rage states, uh, you know, hyperaggressive states, terror states, etc. These are the ones which are part of this, uh, of this person's internal world, which have no access, so to speak, to an external regulator. Number two, the right, as I said, is more connected than the left verbal hemisphere into the body. The heart rate is much more regulated by the right hemisphere than the left hemisphere. And there are severe alterations of arousal that we see with early relational trauma which are essentially dysregulations not on the central nervous system but of the autonomic nervous system. Now the autonomic nervous system uh, has come into the foreground now in cases of post-traumatic stress disorder. What we're saying here is that the body is also dysregulated and the autonomic arousal of the body is, is dysregulated. Well this very much is, is, I think we'll also now we'll see this coming into play with suicidal patients because suicidal patients as we know in the more uh, severe forms of it in the later stages there is a total inability to process anything coming up from the body. They are less responsive to, to their own bodies etc. to felt experience cut off from that and because of this literally they're cut off from their own psychosomatic core and incidentally very much of the time will be in states of severe hypoarousal which is extremely dysregulating this kind of empty core state etc which is why at times they even drive themselves up into the illusion of hypoarousal to hold on to the self so the body that is also going to be a player and i point this out because as opposed to the more behavioral and the cognitive models we're now looking at brain, mind, body models and the body is now coming into play through affects because obviously affects are by definition psychobiological states. Next thing is there is this matter of the self and, and the representation of the self. Obviously in cases of suicidal ideation there is a shattering of the uh, image of the internal representation of the self. Um, that self, that implicit self, which is a non-conscious self, not only the conscious, but the implicit self at the level of the unconscious, that also is highly disintegrated with these, with these individuals here. And again, what I'm suggesting is essentially what that reflects is a lack of integration of the right brain. In order for the right brain to function, there must be good connectivity between the high right hemisphere 
and the lower right brain stem, et cetera, and the subcortical areas. And as we know, the right amygdala subcortical is a big player here. If you do not have regulation from the higher right over the right subcortical amygdala, that's problematic because the right amygdala is, is essentially the threat, fear, danger center of the brain. And, and when dysregulated, it will drive intensely negative affects as we see here. So essentially, um, you're looking at a person who does not have the opportunity to use the higher four centers of the brain, the higher centers of the right frontal areas to regulate their own states. And the reason for that, again, is because of their immature maturation.